there is one feature that dominates the landscape of the Khasi Hills in Meghalaya, it is the deep river valleys and canyons. These are the preferred places of residence for the farmers and cultivators of the Khasi tribe. The terrain may seem inhospitable to outsiders, but to the native people, these river valleys way down below are the habitat, a land of plenty, the origin of civilization. Nongblai village is one such settlement that seems isolated and way too distant from civilization. Located south of Shillong in a deep valley near Watlinghut village, Nongblai captures our imagination on closer inspection. On the Shillong Dauki Highway, we turn right at the Watlinghut Junction on our way to Nongblai. After some 200 meters, we get off to trek down the 4,000 odd steps all the way to the village. This is the start of the journey to a village which is unknown to many. This is a heritage village surrounded on all sides by steep mountains similar to Shangri-La. A visit to Nongblai village is not easy. It takes a lot of energy going down and climbing up in a day. For those not used to walking such steep terrain, it would be wise to stay the night over. A journey starts from the sacred grove, which is at the entrance of the trail to Nongblai. We walk down the steps with broom grass growing on both sides of the path. The locals make this trek look easy as they cross us barefooted with loads on their back while I, wearing thick sole shoes, found it difficult to keep up with the fleeting pace down the steps. After 20 to 30 minutes, we reached the ropeway station on the way. It was basically a shed with an iron carriage that was loaded with materials and moved up and down the mountain on a pulley system, transporting goods to the village and to the markets outside. In the absence of a road where goods can be loaded on vehicles and transported, this ropeway carriage has somewhat helped in transporting heavy loads for the villagers. However, most of the villagers still carry the goods on their backs all the way up and down. When you live 3,000 feet below, there are only two options to carry your goods. One is the head load, the other is this ropeway. 
before we step into the village, we make a detour, turning left onto a cobblestone trail that cuts across the old abandoned village and leads to some of the best known specimens of the root bridges of the Khasi tribe. Nongblai is home to an incredible number of root bridges, the maximum number found in no other village in the Khasi Hills. Altogether, there are 16 root bridges that are still functional and in use by the villagers. Well, we've just reached this first bridge in Nongblai village. And as we take you along this trail, you'll know that this is a village of root bridges. The Nongblai bridges are very old as per the accounts of the elders in the village, some even 300 years old. From Jinking Wa Mathia to Jinking Wa Umtlim, we move on the trail to discover more root bridges along the way. Most of these bridges, named after the streams that rush down the hillsides, provide safe and secure passage for the cultivators as they cross the streams to work in the fields away from the village. Without these bridges, it would have been difficult, next to impossible, to navigate the rushing streams, especially during the rainy season when they get transformed into raging torrents. Nongblai is also known for its oranges. We pass by the orchards but most of the fruit had been harvested. Other crops include beetle leaf, beetle nut, pepper, besides the ubiquitous broom grass that is the mainstay of the village economy. Other produce include honey and other wild edibles. Every root bridge has its own shape and character. No two bridges are the same except for the common ficus roots that are intertwined to form a lattice and trusses that support the bridge. This specimen of rubber tree, scientifically known as Ficus elastica, is also considered sacred by the natives of this region. It is as important to the environment as it is to the economic, social and religious life of the people. It may seem many years ago that the root bridges of Nongblai were the lifeline of the villagers here and may be rightly described as the backbone of the village economy. Today the bridges have assumed a new identity that is more of a cultural heritage status, an example of the tribe's innovation and ingenuity to conquer nature. Found nowhere else in such numbers, the root bridges of Nongblai belong to a different era but have survived the vagaries of weather and stand testimony to a cultural tradition that still thrives in the 21st century and will remain as long as the Khasi tribe continues to live on.
how do you determine the age of a tree? In conventional methods is you cut the stem of the tree and you count the alternate rings on the stem. The other method is you bore into the tree and there's a stem borer and you take out the stem borer and that's how you determine the age of the tree. But in this case, this is a conglomeration of stems and to measure the age of a Ficus elastica is almost impossible. After more than 30 minutes, we had covered quite a lot of the root bridges. There were now only a few left to be discovered as we re-enter the village from the southern side. A bird's eye view of Nongblai village reveals a green patch with houses in between interconnected with a network of footpaths. We walk through the village which has about 60 to 70 houses. The population is small and most of them are farmers cultivators. The future generation of Nongblai are a happy lot, relatively free from the complexities which afflict the counterparts in most cities. There's an upper primary school constructed by the government. The classrooms here are rudimentary with basic facilities typical of the schools found in remote places like Nongblai. Across the football field along with a number of children who accompanied us to our next route bridge destination, Jinking Wa Lang Seng. The Rangseng River is one of the widest and longest river in the village. During this time of the year, water is scarce and the river looks almost bone dry. This was by far the biggest bridge spanning some 25 to 30 meters in length. Recently with the advent of tourism in Meghalaya, these root bridges have become much sought after destinations. These ancient lifelines of an ancient people have become a spectacle to the outside world, attracting hundreds who wish to experience a walk across the bridge. Huge, massive boulders are scattered along the Wa Langseng throughout its course. The remoteness of Nongblai village is the reason why not many people know about this root bridge heritage site. There is hardly any documentation in the past on these root structures. The British who had documented much of the culture and geography of the place do not have any document that describes the existence of these man-made bio-engineered structures. It is probably because of the tough terrain and the presence deep inside the valleys that the former rulers had not made any inroads into this aspect of the culture of the Khasi Hills.
Nong Blai is surrounded on all sides by towering peaks, much alike the legendary Shangri La. From Jinking Wa Lang Seng, we visit one of the elders of the village who was the former elected head of the Council of Villages, Bat Nokot Kiriem. He invited us to his house where we were given the opportunity to beat the traditional drum or bom which he had just finished making. Bat Nokot was a master craftsman who had received an award and citation a few years ago from none other than the President of India. While we sat and chatted with Bart Nokot, his wife welcomed us the traditional Khasi way, offering us betel nut and betel leaf with a dash of white lime. In every Khasi home, the offering of betel nut and leaf, which is chewed, is a common practice. No matter how poor, every household welcomes a guest with a piece of this nut and leaf. The abundance of flowers in and around the village has supported a thriving bee population. The villagers are aware of the importance of the preservation of the environment because their livelihood depends on it. Our journey is coming to an end as we take a break at the village headman's house to refresh ourselves and eat some food before returning to our homes. was a simple but delicious hearty meal that we were served and we straight away started eating. Before continuing on a return journey, we stop by another bridge, Jinking Wa Sura. These bridges would have been lost a long time ago had it not been for the effort of the community to maintain and look after their well being. Once or twice a year, the root bridges like plants are nurtured and taken care from disease and rot. After all, these root bridges are living organisms that are essentially extensions of the ficus tree. Nong Blai is truly the cradle of the root bridge culture of the Khasi tribe. It occupies a special place in the heritage map of Meghalaya for the very fact that it is not only the home to the largest number of root bridges but it is a link of the tribe's ancient past to the present day.
it started raining a bit and we moved on to the last bridge for the day, Jingkeng Wa Lor Um, literally translated into the bridge over the water. The Dengri of Ficus Elastica occupies a very important place in the culture of Nong Blai village. These are not only man-made bridges, but they are spiritual entities. This is Ian signing off. Until we meet again.